Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Friday, August 5th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, um, I am recording this video on Thursday, July 21st, because uh, for you, what today is uh, on August 5th, I'm still on board ship. Uh, I hopefully I'm on board the ship uh, on my wife and my cruise to Alaska for our 25th wedding anniversary. So um, if all goes according to plan and, you know, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, Today, our ship will be at the Tracy Arm Fjord in Alaska. And I don't know if that's a stopover or just looking at the fjord or uh, I don't know. Well, I'll find out, I guess, today. Um, so that's where I am. Uh, today, there's a prayer meeting in at New Beginnings at 9 a.m. in person at the church and also by Zoom. Um, tomorrow, Saturday, there's no church events scheduled. Uh, my ship will be cruising back to Vancouver tomorrow. And uh, on Sunday morning uh, at 10 a.m. is our morning service. The preacher on Sunday is Jaime Castanier. Uh, many of you know Jaime because he was a member of our church for many years. Um, went to uh, be a missionary with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship after uh, being a member of our church and then um, has gone on now to get or become ordained in the Christian Missionary Alliance and is a pastor of a church down in North Carolina. And he is in our neighborhood for this Sunday and has agreed to come and preach. And you all know uh, how well he preaches. And he's such a great guy. Jaime is uh, just uh, incredibly warm hearted and and with a just a passionate intellect, uh, just a really wonderful guy. I love hearing him preach, and I learn. I said this about Elvis, which was true about Elvis. It's true about Jaime too. I love hearing him preach because I, I learn so much from from them. And and uh, you know, I, I uh, there, there's sort of this thing in me as I schedule preachers uh, for when I'm not around, and I'm like, you know, well. I want them, I don't want them to be too good because I don't want people to think, oh, they're better than Pastor House at preaching. And I, the, the, my little insecurities bubble up. But I, I, honestly, I, I try to get the best possible preachers that I can for you. And, you know, Jaime and, and Elvis are, are really two of the best. So I, I'm really excited about uh, him being here. And I'll, Karina and I will uh, be checking that out on live stream and uh, looking forward to that. Um, so on Sunday, uh, there's morning service at 10 a.m. Uh, in person and on live stream with Jaime Castanier. And then at 7 p.m. is going to be our deeper, our deeper life group for teenagers and young adults. And that's uh, at the church. Um, as for my wife and I on Sunday, uh, in the afternoon, we'll be disembarking from our ship in Vancouver on Sunday and uh, getting on board our plane to come home from Vancouver. Uh, we'll be landing on Monday morning uh, at about 10 o'clock in uh, at LaGuardia Airport. And uh, so uh, our trip will be over as of Monday. And uh, I'm sure flying overnight, I'm sure we're going to get back pretty exhausted. So I don't plan on being in the office on that Monday either. So anyway, uh, that's what's going on with us and with the church, and those are our announcements. So let's talk about the Bible. Uh, on Sunday, this past Sunday, I'm, uh, I'm Elvis preached about out of Second uh, Timothy chapter two, the latter verses of Second Timothy chapter two, and it's talking about the about what it is, what it takes character wise to become, uh, uh, to be, to serve well in a position of sort of public leadership in the church, and. Um, Boy, it's not been the, the character traits that uh, we might expect, right? Uh, in our day and age, when you're looking for someone to be in public ministry, you know, what are the, you're looking for education, you're looking for experience, you're looking for dynamic, visionary, those sorts of things. And, and, and what, what Paul instead says is uh, it has to do with your character. Flee youthful passions, he says. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and grace, along with those who call upon the Lord from a pure heart. He says the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach patiently enduring evil. And you might think, well, uh, that's not what 
pastors are like. The, the pastors that I follow on YouTube or that I watch on, uh, you know, on TV, the pastors of the, the churches that are growing the most, you know, are the ones that are the most dynamic. They seem to be different sorts of personalities. They're combative and, and uh, not caring, you know, they're, they're, they, they don't, suffer fools gladly or they're the ones who who rip those atheists a new one you know or whatever and and uh well you know is that what the bible says they should be you know i i i'm not you know dinging the f folks who are other folks who are preaching the gospel i far far from it but um you know i just want to look at the bible and see what the bible says about the character of those in leadership what should it be and when paul says the lord's servant must not be quarrelsome but kind to everyone, uh, that's a must, right? It's a must word there. Uh, so, you know, when I see Christian leaders who are, are quarrelsome and are not kind to everyone and not even by a long shot, right? Who, are, who don't patiently endure evil, but instead are returning evil for evil, um, I, I wonder, I wonder, uh, you know, God, what are you doing in their lives? What uh, Maybe... Maybe he's doing something I don't see, uh, you know, and I, but I certainly say, okay, look, that's not how I want to be. That's not how I believe the Lord is calling me to be from the scriptures. Um, but it's, what's interesting is, of course, uh, the, the twist at the end of the chapter here is this, right? That uh, he says, correcting his opponents with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Who is them? Them is opponents, his, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. So God's servant is correcting uh, his opponents with gentleness. Why? What's God's concern? Is it God's concern, sure, God's concern is for his servant, absolutely, his servant's character, but ultimately, God's concern is for opponents of the kingdom, right? God may perhaps grant those opponents repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil as being, after being captured by him to do his will. God wants those who are opposed to his kingdom to be, have the opportunity to repent, come to their senses, right? Repent, uh, you know, escape from the snare that they're in, right? Someone who's opposed to the gospel, they're, they're caught up in, in the snare of the devil. They, uh, and the snare may look really nice. You know, it might, it's not that they're necessarily bad people, right? But the snare might look really nice to them. It might be, it might be power, it might be money, it might be, it might be helping people even, you know, if that's what keeps people away from Jesus, if, 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 you, if, if you can make a God out of helping people, then praise God. Then the, the devil says, fine with that, I'm great with that. Um, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's get them involved in anything but in, in, in the relationship with God. Uh, but God's, the, God's perspective is that God wants his opponents to become his friends, right? God wants to woo them over into a relationship with him. And, you know, so correcting his opponents with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. They may come to their senses how is that going to happen if they're engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with God's servants, right? If God's servants uh, face their opponents with combativeness, right, and we engage in the battle, uh, when, when you're in the battle, your, your adrenaline gets pumping, right? And you have that fight or flight reflex that's going, and, and the last thing you're going to do is back down. You're not going to repent when you're in the middle of a battle. You repent when you have a moment to reflect and say, whoa, oh yeah, something's going on here that I haven't been paying attention to. God's concern is that his opponents would come to repentance. And, you know, I, I look around in the Christian world today, God help me. I look around the Christian world today and I see God's servants uh, picking up the, 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 the battle axe and going full tilt boogie against those who are opponents of the kingdom and saying, well, I'm going to, I'm going to own those guys. I'm going to, I'm going to zing them. I'm going to ding them. I'm going to whack them. 
right? And, you know, the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of God, which is, I preached on the other day, right? And so, it, which is great, you know, it won't prevail against the kingdom of God. We, we need to endure. Uh, yeah, we need to have the armor of God. We need to attack. Well, all the armor that is listed there is, almost all of it is defensive, right? But we engage certainly in, in our, we do engage in discussion. We, we engage in, 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 even in argument, uh, with, with the, the proponents of, of the opponents of the kingdom. But, um, but it's with the desire to persuade. It's not with the desire to destroy. It's not with a desire to own or to, to bash or to, it's, it's to be kind and it's to be gentle it's to to put them in a position where they have the opportunity to repent the thing is that the harder you drive people uh, in opposition the less likely they are to take the time to repent they don't have a, a second to do it because you're going you're jumping down their throats uh god's god desires for them to escape the snare of the devil uh, even though they've been captured by him to do his will God wants to set them free. God's heart is for the unbeliever to come to know him. God's heart is for the pagan. God's heart is for the opponent. God's heart is for the angry, uh, hurt person to have an opportunity to repent because of the gentleness that's being shown to them, because of the kindness that's being shown to them. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I I think I'm beating a dead horse here, but because the truth this is so important to me, and 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 I hope it's important to you too. That as you as you as you hear the word of God, you're saying to yourself, ah, I need to respond to my opponents with gentleness. I need to respond to my opponents. I need to have a heart for my opponents that's like God's heart for my opponents. I should be wanting their best in every encounter. Um, that's what it means to be a vessel fit for honorable use. It's hard. You have to patiently endure evil. It's hard, right? You need to forgive. It's hard. You need to work on your own character. Uh, but the rewards are great as well. And, and if you're pursuing those things, then who knows? But that people might turn their lives over to Christ because of the gentleness that they're being shown. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and for your love for us. You've shown us kindness, mercy, and gentleness, and we've responded to you. We didn't respond to you because you were jumping down our throats and bashing us over the head. We responded to you because you were kind to us. Lord, help us to learn that lesson when we're working uh, with opponents of the kingdom. Lord, help me to learn that lesson and, and to have that lesson deeply in my heart. Lord, I pray for everybody within the sound of my voice uh, that, that they would hear it too. I pray for uh, what's going on. Yeah, nobody got birthdays this weekend. So pray for the prayer meeting on Friday. Uh, may it be filled with your spirit. May And thank you so much for all the folks who are there. May they be blessed for their commitment to prayer. Pray for our Sunday morning service. Be with Jaime as he prepares and fill him with your spirit. Be with everyone within the sound of his voice, Lord, whether on uh, live stream or in person. And may they be touched by your spirit and may they be moved to do your will. Um, I pray for your kindness uh, and mercy to Karina and I as we're concluding our trip. Um, help us to be kind to all that we need and, and pointers to the kingdom. And Lord, bring us back home safely to the church and our family. Uh, Lord, we love you and we trust you and we give ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm starting to lose my voice after recording four of these things uh, this morning on Thursday, uh, but I've reached the end. Uh, and I, I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. I guess I'm going to have to record one for Monday. One more to do. <laughs>